go guys shot down here to Newport News gonna visit the Virginia War Museum and let you know tickets are eight dollars uh, I've actually got this three package deal I had bought back in the fall you can visit Enview Plantation uh, Lee Hall Mansion and uh, get you into the War Museum so yeah just checking out some of the artillery out here and yeah, let me go inside first check things out hopefully it'll be a, a little bit warmer when I'm done all right made it in here and they say you want to take a right when you enter and it looks like it kind of follows the timeline american revolution war of 1812 civil war so forth Pretty neat flag, 3rd Regiment, Virginia Volunteers. Shot heard around the world. Pretty neat looking flag up there. Bunch of flintlock rifles, old flintlock pistol over there. Uh, sword and scabbard. Looks like that would be maybe from the French Indian War. Uh, a spawn tune. Probably American and looks like this was used during the Revolutionary War 1775-1780 Looks like something from the uh, medieval period Okay, so it looks like this was used by commanders uh, pretty much as an instrument um, If he would slam the pontoon down that would mean halt and uh, if he would point it forward then his uh, army would advance Couple more muskets over here and a deer skin. Um, a deer skin uniform. A hunting flock, it says here, for a continental soldier. A bunch of these rifles. And Pretty neat painting over here. Oil canvas, uh, the Battle of Lake Erie, and this is during the War of 1812. Uh, looks like that guy's having a bad day. There's another uh, guy who uh, fell overboard. So it looks like uh, they just got off the ship. They're headed into trouble. And Battle of Craney Island. And another battle during the War of 1812. And it took place down in the Hampton Roads area here. Yeah. And this is a general office, officer's coatee. And a guy named Moses Myers. He was a prominent businessman down here in the Norfolk area. Yeah, a ton of these muskets. A uh, bunch of swords over here. Going back to the 1790s. And maybe some sort of ivory handle there. Cavalry saber. Pretty uh, interesting helmets over here. And epaulets, the origin of epaulets. Hmm. Yeah. 
the uniform buttons, an ivory comb, I guess that looks like a toothbrush, yeah. And a leather round hat here, 1810, again from the War of 1812. And Virginia military coatee, War of 1812, worn by Joseph DeLong. Uh, looks French over here. Virginia military coatee, 1824. What is this saying? It has something to do with Marquis Lafayette, but um, uh, the more of these epaulets, dragoon helmet, part of a canteen, a knapsack down there, 1854. Uh, that's pretty fancy. <laughs> Bell cram crowned militia hat, manufactured by J Jacob Wagner. Up in Philadelphia. Alright, getting into the Mexican War over here. Mr. Polk's War. Battle of Palo Alto. Battle of Buena Vista, General Taylor. All right, the Halls of Montezuma. A Dragoon Officer's Full Dress Coatee, Sierra 1833. Few more swords, Mexican shako plate. Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo. Oh yeah, this is when Mexico signed over all that territory. Right, getting into the Civil War. Confederate jackets, reproduction. A flock coat, Bowie knife up there. A few belt buckles down there. Uh, George Washington, Abraham Lincoln. Confederate officers flock coat. An overcoat. snare drum all kinds of knickknacks down here folding cup inkwell a wallet down there safety matches and compass down there Fight it out. I'm looking for recruits. Battle of the Ironclads. Dang. Fifteen inch Dahlgren cannonball. 
Peninsula Campaign. So obviously this is highlighting a lot of battles down from this area. And they must have pulled this from the bottom of the bay. Yeah, a ton of swords over here. The Sydney B. Snyder Collection. Revolvers over here. Dang, tiny. Pocket revolver Colts, 1855. Another tiny one. Uh, crutch over here. Some sort of leg brace. Wooden splint. A surgical kit. Mm. Uh, another pike over here. Looks like used by a cavalryman. Warrant C. Yeah, more on the ironclads. And let you know that's the Confederate ironclad. Running the blockade. Another flock coat worn by William Conway. 1864. A servant's coat, 1859. A sea service pistol. Naval officer's coat. Andrew Johnson, Federal Organization, Sons of the Confederate. Hmm, a few medals. Hello. Wow, the 2nd Regiment U.S. Cavalry, 44 stars. I uh, used between 1891 and 1896. That's pretty neat. The Indian Wars. Oh, a couple of arrows and a war club. Oh, that's pretty fancy. Uh, cavalry summer fatigue helmet, 1889. And what is this? Dress uniform, coat of a musician. Okay. Saddle over here. 1874, uh, another flag, 1st Cavalry, 1889-1990. Alright, so, I imagine that's Norfolk, or Newport News, I don't know. Uh, oh, the Spanish-American War. Volunteers. This 
to be 1895 officers under dress coat. What is that? A uh, sword? A belt sling. Pioneer Corps, the Giddin, Guiden, Rhode Island Volunteers, alright so we're getting into the whole Spanish, uh, when we attack Cuba, Slowly getting into more modern times, you can tell. Carriage box. Sword and scabbard. Who are these guys? Troops in uniform, 1898. Okay, definitely getting into more modern times here. Philippines, a bid for an empire. Eighteen ninety one. And what is this thing? Oh, a Bogobo Headhunter Shield from Mindanao, Philippines, 1901. That's pretty crazy. Looks kind of heavy. Days of Empire. All right, National Guard, Mexican border. Just looped around and the Great War, World War One. Definitely some crazy helmets over here. The Prussian helmets. Okay, this is kind of pre World War One. Before Prussia was Germany. Uh, Stormtroopers outfit over here. Personal effects. Some sort of little pipe playing cards. Hmm. Maxim machine gun. Yeah, World War One was brutal. We had to figure out a lot of crazy ways to kill each other. You now had the tank, the airplane, you had mustard gas, you had the machine gun. Things got crazy. Anti tank rifle. Wow. Mm. Uh, another uh, machine gun here. Wow. Okay, old propeller up there. Another, okay, a Prussian flag, it appears. German pistol. Yeah, these are all German pistols, it looks like. Mm. Kind of a tank crew helmet. Ambulance. Uh, some sort of medical uniform. All these propaganda posters. War resignation. Oh, uh, yeah, the draft must register everybody between 21 and 30. Over there. Oh yeah, they actually used carrier pigeons in World War I. Transmit messages. Yeah, 
I think World War One was the craziest of all wars. I mean, when it comes to the horrors of war, it definitely takes the, the cake. The rise of air power. Oh, uh, some Zeppelins up there. Germany used. Naval uniform. Service for travel and training. Okay, this might be at World War Two now. Pearl Harbor. Tunic, white dress, U.S. Navy. Um, an overcoat, 1941, worn by Lieutenant Albert Bainbridge. Oh, all these German U-boats, aka submarines. Yeah, it's crazy to realize they were so close. Battle of the Atlantic, which we eventually won. Surface warfare. Oh, wow. It looks like a submarine serviceman's uniform. French coat uniform. Okay, a bunch of uh, supplies over here. A sewing kit, money belt, some dog tags, something used for shaving. Pistol, single shot, uh, flare projector. 45 caliber from the States to the Reich. Looks like he captured a uh, Nazi flag. Metal detector. Uh, that's an anti-tank mine. Mm. A serious weapon down here. Machine gun, Browning aircraft. Could fire 800 rounds a minute. Wow. Flying jacket, flying cap. This guy. Some flying helmets. A door to some sort of plane. Uh, parachute over here. Flying Tigers. I think I saw that when I was at the Air and Space Museum up in Chantilly. Chinese nationalism flag. Iwo Jima. I 
always found the war in the Pacific more fascinating. Oh, uh, old school radio receiver transmitter. Japan gives up. Korea. Winter War. And I believe this is going to be the Russian War with Finland. Or it might have been something else. <laughs> A uh, Korean flag up there. Uniform Sierra, 1952. What is this? Flamethrower. Soviet rocket launcher. Okay, getting into Vietnam now. Viet Cong uniform. Yeah, yeah getting into some serious weaponry. Submachine gun. Gas mass, Viet Cong. Uh, Swedish K9 millimeter. A grunt's uniform. Heavy machine gun, anti-aircraft. Dang. Imagine firing that thing. Domestic dissidents, airborne. What is this? Missile launcher. Light anti tank. Oh, yeah, a couple grenades down here, hand grenade. Think first, but fast. 1970. It must be his girlfriend, Kathy Honey. Honey. Uh, cool. The Jeep, 1942. Looks like a pretty comfortable ride. <laughs> Winter service coat and cap. General Lemuel Shepard. Mark Clark, four star general. Propaganda leaflets. Global War on Terror. Oh, Osama bin Laden.
uh, relic from uh, the Twin Towers, it looks like. Piece of metal recovered from the site of the New York City World Trade Center. I need to go back up to New York and uh, check out that memorial. Yeah, crazy stuff. 2003 soldier's uniform. Saddam down there. Looks like that's an Iraqi uniform. Battle of Fallujah. Improvised explosive device made with an old school Motorola phone. Italian desert tunic. Mark 6 helmet used by the British. Uh, Bin Laden. I'm sorry. Who sent Saddam Hussein? Back our girls over there. Yeah, there's a lot to this museum, women in war. Ah, uh, victory. I'm not sure where to go from, okay, I'll just quickly. A bunch of female uniforms. Looks like some surgical stuff. Is she pregnant? <laughs> yeah, pregnancy in the military has been a source of contention since women were officially integrated into the armed forces. It's a French rail railroad boxcar used during World War One. Hampton Roads, Port of Embarkment. All right, I'll step onto this boxcar. Hampton Roads, Port of Embarkment. Okay. Station Service Command, Camp Patrick Henry. U.S. Naval Hospital Staff. Aircraft sector, Fort Eustis. Okay, yeah, it's all local stuff, it looks like. Full dress uniform, John T. Knight. He was a quartermaster. And 
yeah, obviously this is where we shipped off a, a lot of soldiers uh, over to Europe during the First war World War. Red Cross, Red Cross uniform, Lieutenant Elton Weaver. Okay, housing down here. Uh, that's a siren, a raid siren. Siren. That's uh, Hitler, Mussolini. Harbor again. Oh, what's this? Okay, Hampton Roads. Military map of Newport News. Over here, Camp Stewart, and I guess this is just their housing layout. Swords, this is right, army. Oh, these are samurai swords, army samurai swords. Okay. Interesting stuff in here. That's a microscope, I guess. A few compasses. Handheld periscope. It's a bunch of uh, binoculars. Wow. Fire some mortars. Mortar shells, 81 millimeters, high explosive, with a range of 3,000 yards. You could fire those things at over a mile. I guess about three miles. Radio transmitters and receivers. I see another parachute up there. Winter flying suit. Okay, so these are some Japanese weapons, it looks like. Some serious stuff over here. Aircraft cannon. Japanese infantry man. Some homemade sandals. Some sort of breastplate, breast shield made of reeds. Okay, some Italian medals, badges, German. I guess that would be Mussolini again.
Yeah, Italian ammunition. These are Italian weapons, it appears. Worn by the Italian mounted units. A Beretta. Some Hungarian weapons. Austro-Hungarian model helmet, uh, 1916. Australia. French Army uniform. China, Burma, India. Uh, some of our allies, World War II. Uh, Soviet uniform. Canadian Naval Officer's Cap. The Rise of Nazi Germany. Big bust of uh, Hitler. Book burning. A coffee can cap. Roast pan lid. You. Okay, more German. SS officer's cap. Or, I'm sorry, that's a service cap. Infantry. Dress belt. Nineteen forty Flagstaff uh, concentration camps. I guess, yeah, you know, one of the Jewish uh, uniforms. Hitler Youth. Uh, service cap.
fireman's helmet. A lot of German memorabilia. The National War Flag. Manometer. <clears throat> So this was worn in North Africa, it appears. Africa campaign decoration. Field glasses, compass, another African core helmet. Anti-tank weapon. This is your World War II stuff here. It's pretty big. Uh, prisons of war. Oh, this is, uh, I didn't even realize this is in Norfolk, the Victory Arch. Or, I'm sorry, Newport News. Wow, yeah, this place is really big. Looks like some French attire, French goggles, French tunic. The Tet Offensive. Oh, old school conduit. Some canned peaches, fruit cake. Military police officer, Saigon. Offensive. Thank you. 
Oh, John McCain uniform. Royal Australian Armored Corps Beret. Ranger's helmet. Tunnel rats. There's a trap door leading to a Viet Cong tunnel. Hamburger Hill. I need to study up on my Vietnam history. Cost of war. through here oh uh, yeah this is pretty cool some artillery over here Gatling gun Colts model 1883 45 caliber millimeter automatic cannon 1938 uh, some heavy machine guns over here anti-tank gun Field Cannon, 1906. Uh, the Fall of Berlin, I guess that's the Berlin Wall. French mortars, World War One. This one looks pretty old. Uh, Nineteen seventeen. Gas warfare. German field howitzer. I would say this looks like a torpedo. Yeah. 1948 to 1958, it was in use. And, uh, mortars, mortar shells. Anti-tank gun, 
anti-aircraft. A couple rockets. <clears throat> Looks like some Russian pistols. And some German, German, French, Italian. Okay, it looks like just a couple more things, and I'm, I'm gonna go outside and check out some of that art artillery. Eighteen ninety-three. I was gonna say this would be not too long after the Civil War, used by the Germans. Army truck, nineteen nineteen. And some sort of gurney here used to haul off wounded uh, troops. Uh, World War One. Yeah, looks like that would be hitched onto soldiers and they would pull pull that. An escort wagon, 1878. <laughs> Oh, wow, there's more over here. More of these posters. More of these propaganda posters. Remember the Lusitania? Okay, just finished taking the tour of the museum and I uh, apologize, my uh, my battery died in, in the uh, towards the end there. Anyway, so it looks like an M53 self-propelled gun developed in the 1950s by the Pacific Car and Foundry Company. It has a range of 14.6 miles. bunch of guns all kind of wrap around and this doesn't have a marker over here while I'm walking to let you know yeah I just got back from my New York trip quick trip kind of just an extended weekend and it was my first time in Manhattan so just wanted to go up there first check things out just get to know the subway system get to know my way around and I'm hoping to go back maybe in March. This time I'm gonna check out the Statue of Liberty uh, in the new, the new World Trade Center, the Freedom Tower, and the little memorial on the bottom dedicated to the Twin Towers. Over here, and again, there's no plaque, but it looks like a pretty serious gun. And I don't know if this is kind of an anchor down here. And yeah, I wanted to check out this monster. Okay, so this is the T1 240 millimeter gun. Uh, looks like in November 1944, the US Army requested a 240 millimeter cannon be designed for the purpose of long range fortification and communication center destruction. And it actually wasn't uh, completed until 1950. And by the time it was completed, it was kind of already obsolete. Uh, 1949, it says they had begun work on an atomic cannon. So, Yeah, it doesn't look like it got much use, but pretty impressive. Come over, check this thing out. And this is a 
quad mount Bofor anti-aircraft gun, 40 millimeter. Okay, so it looks like it's uh, dedicated to the prisoners of war miss, missing in action. Let's see if I can read this. We honor those who uh, gave their best. Uh, yeah, it looks like each branch, uh, dedication on each side. Coast Guard over here some names down here on the ground Vietnam War Monument groundbreaking was in 1990 some more names down there on the ground Alright, like I said, there's a bunch of tanks over there. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna hop to this actually. And a little place to, okay, there's a statue over there. I'll go check that out real quick. Uh, kind of a neat little place to sit down. The Hope, it says. Living Memorial to the six million Jewish victims. Okay, so for the Holocaust. And a little pla platform dedicated by this uh, Harry Rayner. Okay, day of infamy, December 7th, 1941. Okay, this honors the survivors. to tell you what exactly these are. were kind of more used during desert storm
So it looks like this thing was used by the German Army World War I. Uh, fired high explosive uh, concrete piercing rounds. Uh, had a range of six miles. Alright, well I guess that wraps it up for the Virginia War Museum and I would definitely check it out. Uh, it's eight dollars to get in and it's pretty big inside. I, I was surprised. So anyway, see ya.